Hello everyone and welcome to another video. I am Simply G and today I'm going to be talking about Iridori Comics's newest label, Iridori Sakura. So if you're not familiar with who Iridori Comics are, they are a licensor that specialise in self-published or doujinshi works. The wonderful thing about Iridori Comics is that they actually work directly with each of these creators and all of the doujinka are actually included in the localization process so it allows Iridori Comics to give readers the closest version and the intended version and previously have put out doujin that are explicit, so hentai stuff. They've also put out all ages stuff under a different line. And Iridori Sakura is a label specifically for their Yuri, BL, and LGBT works. So today I'm going to be talking about three of their launch titles, which are all currently available on their new website, Iridori Light, which I will link down below if you are wanting to read any of these three titles. And of the three, two are Yuri, and one is a more general LGBT work. So with this new line, there are ratings logos on the front covers of each work. So you're very aware of whether or not the book you're planning to read is explicit or not. Of the three titles that I read for this review, all fell under the non-explicit category. So the first title that I read from Iridori Sakura was She Wants to Do What? by Ichinorai, which is a romance comedy office lady Yuri. It currently costs $4.95 USD on their website and is the shortest of all three titles that I read. This story focuses on two office ladies, Anzu and Momoka, one who is the subordinate of the other. So the basic premise is that Anzu makes a somewhat joking remark um, that she would like to see the quote-unquote sex face of Momoka in the office. In response to this comment, Momoka really doesn't know how to process it. She does find, she does try to rationalize it as a humorous misunderstanding as she's not quite sure about Anzu's personality and she's also not that confident with her own sexuality. She's it's later revealed that she is a virgin, so it doesn't have any back, like history with being flirted with or ha like joking about sex and that sort of thing. And ultimately, after a period of awkwardness, the two decide to, um, I guess, come clean to each other and their relationship develops from there. Of the three, this was probably my least favorite, just because I wasn't that comfortable with this tone that I, I just feel like the that sort of remark of I want to see your sex face when said to a co-worker um, that causes so much discomfort and confusion um, isn't <laughs> like it, it's not fun for me to read. I think I personally like it straight up is sexual harassment in the workforce, which doesn't make me want to cheer the relationship on for these two women. I do appreciate that these are adult women that are being talked about. I do think that Ichinorai has a pretty like nice or pretty easy to follow art style. I think there's potential here, um, especially if we get another book with these two, but the relationship wasn't one that I felt particularly like I wanted to support. Just the basic premise and the pre-existing relationship that these two characters have didn't, didn't work for me. The second Iridori Sakura title that I read was also another Yuri. This is Why Does Love Do This To Me by Ayano Ayano. This is a romance drama, so a lot less of a humorous tone compared to the previous book. It is currently $5.95 on Iridori Light, and this is the, the middle length 
um, book that I read as well, so a little bit longer than the previous as well. This is another story about adult women, presumably office ladies who worked together, called Saki and Omori. And the basic premise of this one is that both women have uh, a secret crush on the other but isn't confident enough to admit their feelings. Despite this, they are trying to create a situation in which the relationship kind of just happens. Um, so the book opens up with one of these women staying over night with this other woman at her house, hoping to kind of spark this relationship. She's, she's made sure that there's no excuse for her to not stay overnight because, as I said, she really wants this relationship to work out but isn't confident enough to be um, more overt with her feelings. On the other side of this coin, Saki is really happy and excited but again isn't confident enough to admit her crush on this other woman. So the drama obviously comes from this presumed unrequited love between these women, um, despite us as the audience knowing that they do actually like each other. And so these characters have to work through that before the characters can be more open and honest with, about their feelings. I did like this book more than the previous. Ayano Ayano does a really good job at making this these characters' struggles pretty relatable despite the somewhat melodramatic um, aspect of it. I think the complicated uncertainties that women who love women experience because they're not quite sure where the line between friendship and romance falls for people who they are not sure on their sexuality is quite true to life. I do think that it does reflect a lot of people's nervousness when trying to bring a relationship to a new point and not knowing how the other will react. It is, like I said, not an explicit comic, but we do have some development um, and recognition of the relationship by the end of it. For me, who's not really a big fan of miscommunication in her romance series, the fact that this is a one-chapter doujin does help it a lot, so the misunderstandings aren't stretched too long. And as I said, it is quite understandable as to why these characters feel this way. They are both very proactive, despite their hesitancy, and it is satisfying to see the conclusion to this particular book. I would like to read more from Ayano Ayano, and I do hope that Iridori Comics does consider licensing more from this creator. The third and final doujin that I read for this review what is Minekun is a Sexual by Isaki Uta. This is a romance drama LGBT title and is the longest of the three and also my favorite of the three. And it's currently $7.25 on their website. So this is the story of two college students, Mine and Murai. Murai has a huge crush on her classmate, Mine-kun, and she admits this to him multiple times to his face. And in response to this, he admits to her that he's not only bisexual, but also asexual. And if they were to have a relationship together, he personally wouldn't be comfortable having a sexual relationship with her. He's very upfront about his sexuality and his personal comforts. And in response to this confession, Murai tells him that she doesn't have a problem with that. If she, Just as long as she can be in a relationship with him, she doesn't really care about those other aspects. And thus, they start dating. The book follows their relationship and how Murai starts to reconsider her stance on what she values in a relationship and why or why not a relationship with Minekun, who she does really care about, might not work out because of their different needs. Murai be becomes more aware of what she kind of hand waved and dismissed when with Minekun's confession about being asexual, and how now, having been in a relationship with him for a period of time, her personal expectations for a relationship. I did like this book the best out of the three. I really appreciate 
a story that can positively portray asexuality. When reading the author's note at the end of this book, Isaki Uta does mention that this was a book done in the process of their own exploration of their own sexuality, most notably their own asexuality, and how ho they hope that this book will help others not only understand asexuality from outside of the community, but also the various levels within the asexual spectrum. I thought Mine-kun and Murai were both quite likeable, both very understandable, and despite not necessarily making the best choices or being somewhat naive in expectation, they do work really well as characters. And ultimately, I do think that this story is quite kind and quite well-intentioned. I will say that my biggest issue with this particular book is that though it is about Minekun and his asexuality, it's not really written from his perspective at all. We get a little bit of insight at the very end, but this is more so Murai's story and her understanding or misunderstanding of the asexual community. And so this isn't really a story about an asexual experience from an asexual character's perspective, which may be disappointing for readers who are wanting that. It's more so one of those stories that's an outsider looking in and reflecting on their own experiences due to that. It more so focuses on this idea of do you need to have sex to be in a loving relationship? What does, like, what value does sex and f the physical aspect of a relationship mean for different people? And is there a possibility of compromise when it comes to being in a relationship with somebody who is not at the same level of comfort with uh, physical, you know, physical relationship aspects comparatively to you? I think is still valuable and I do think that it is ultimately a really good story, but I don't know whether or not this is the asexual representation that asexuals are looking for. This is definitely a positive portrayal, but by being written from the perspective of the character who's not asexual, it may be disappointing for some readers. Despite this, I did like the ending, um, especially kind of the, the very end little snapshots of where the characters are at the end of the series. For the three of these books, I really want to commend Irodori Sakura and just Irodori comics in general. As per usual, they do a wonderful job with their translation. All three of the books read really easily, really organically. All of the characters spoke and felt like real people. And the lettering done by Mercedes McGarry and Tim Sun for these three books were wonderful. There's a lot of really well integrated and well done handwritten fonts and sound effects done in these books. The two really managed to capture the original feel of what I presume was also handwritten from the original. Lettering is such an art and honestly a lot of people don't even notice it unless it's done badly. So I did want to really highlight just the wonderful work that these two did because it really made me feel like it was how this was intended to be read. It had the same level of professional quality that I have come to expect from Iridori Comics and their subsequent labels. So hopefully that gave you some idea of my personal opinions on the three launch titles from Iridori Sakura. You can read all of them, as I said, on their newest website, Iridori Light, and I will link the product page for all three in the description below. Also in the description I will include the link to Iridori Sakura's Twitter in case you're wanting to follow them, find out about their newest licenses and their upcoming releases, so be sure to follow them there. Let me know in the comments if you agree or completely disagree with me on any of these works, whether you've read them or you've heard about them or were planning on reading them. If you had similar problems to me, or if you didn't see any problems with these titles, I love to hear your thoughts and opinions when I do these sorts of videos.
But thank you guys so, so much for watching. I am G from Simply G, and I'll catch you in the next video. Bye till then.